Yo, yo, Entertainment for One, E for One podcast. I'm Anthony AP. And like this video, subscribe to the channel if you like, if you like my material. And check out my older videos so you can kind of get a feel if you're new to watching me, what I'm on and what I'm all about. I'd appreciate it. Um, first of all, before I start this vid, I want to shout out a couple couple of different YouTube channels that really dope, really informative to me. I literally was watching these channels all day yesterday. I want to shout out to uh, St. Last Stories and Interviews. Uh, also, King Erner, uh, Link, Most Circle of Honor podcast. And also, was this Gully TV? Got to be Gully TV, right? Most definitely. Yeah, I want to shout out uh, Gully TV because I got a lot of what I'm about to talk about from his interview that he talked about on his channel and another channel. I think it was the St. Laz channel. I think so. Pardon me if I'm wrong. But he talked about a lot of this. I'm talking about Steady B and Cool C. Uh, Gully TV uh, told uh, the story. Very interesting, dope visual. I was getting visuals all in my head the whole time. Shout out to Gully TV again. Um, the whole time I was listening to it. And he talked about how in, what was it, 1990, late 96, I think it was 97, he said, he was locked up with Steady B and Cool C. Now, I'm not going to give a whole, you know, straight up um, synopsis of what happened with Steady B and Cool C. I'm not going to give a whole synopsis because there's literally channels on YouTube that you can go to for really dope synopsis about what happened with the whole situation between them. But I'll, I'll break it down real, real, real briefly if you're unfamiliar. And there's another channel I wanted to shout out to, but my, my Wi-Fi, of course, is acting weird now that I'm recording. But um, Steady B and Cool C, two prominent hip-hop artists. They were two prominent hip-hop artists from, oh, Bottom Theory TV. I almost forgot him. Can't forget about uh, Bottom Theory TV. Shout out to YouTube. Thank you for that info that you provided. Um, but Steady B and Cool C, two prominent hip hop artists of the 1980s, late 1980s. Uh, between Steady B came out in like 86 and Cool C came out in like 88, 89 ish around there. But they were from Philly. Shout out to everybody in Philly. Shout out to my brother, my best friend, Hype, Hype Stress in Philly. Shout out to his crew. Shout out to the crew. Everybody in Philly, you know what I mean? Um, so Steady B, Cool C, very, very popular hip-hop artists in the late 80s. Uh, they weren't like, you know, lack of a, a better artist to think of off the top of my head. They weren't like MC Hammer popular to where they had mega success like that. But they were popular in the streets and in, in hip-hop circles and got a considerable amount of airplay with their videos, whether it be on Rap City in the late 80s on BET or Yo! MTV Raps. Um, cool C had the Glamorous Life, which was a was a really big song, major successful song. And Steady B had his joints. One of my favorite Steady B songs was Going Steady, the, the female joint. But anyway, long story short, short story short, when times got rough in the in the early 90s, like around 95, you know, their music career was pretty much done and over with. You know, they, you know, first of all, they had formed a group in the early 90s, uh, CEB, Count Endless Bank. Um, I don't want to go too much too deep into that. But what, what I'm saying is um, times got rough and they decided to rob a bank in 95. And it turned into not only them being unsuccessful in robbing that bank, but they also killed uh, the first. Uh, they, they, they killed um, uh, a female black police officer in the process. And that was the first uh, woman uh, female to be killed in the line of duty. First black woman to be killed in the line of duty. Uh, so short story short, you know, they got caught. You know, Cool C was on the run for a little bit. They got caught. Uh, you know, and Steady B, you know, when, you know, when 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 shit got tough, Steady B started telling. You know, Steady B started saying how Cool C was the culprit, and Cool C shot the you know female officer. Condolences, of course, to her family and all the families involved in this tragic event. That's what happened, and I found that out through watching Gully TV yesterday and a whole bunch of other interviews and. 
pretty much the premise of what I'm saying is I was surprised how the prison I found out through Gully how the prison experience was for Steady B in prison, right? Because Steady B was a successful hip hop artist at the time in the late 80s, you know, early, early 90s, but late 80s. So you would think that in prison, Steady B would pretty much be looked at as, you know, oh, shit, yo, that's Steady B. You know what I mean? Yo, Steady, what up? You know, you would think that he would have some kind of n not prestige in jail that's what i'm not i'm not trying to say that but you would think that people in jail would kind of look at him as if he was that dude like damn it's messed up that steady b is in here locked up with us but they would basically other prisoners and other inmates would hold him at a high regard but that's just not what happened when steady got locked up you know what i'm saying he's still him and cool c serving like cool c is actually on a death sentence but it keeps getting postponed uh, stay and it doesn't look like, you know, I guess because laws have changed in Pennsylvania that he'll be executed. Um, but Steady B, you know, and, and, and the reason why Steady B was basically the way the story is being was told by my man Gully is that Steady B was getting ridiculed while he was in prison. You know, people walking around mocking him, calling him names, you know, making fun of him, going around, you know, uh, saying the glamorous life chant. If you don't know, ooh, ooh. That was, the you know, on the course of the glamorous life. You know, people, the inmates and people in jail were, were mocking Steady B. They would look, they, they looked at Steady B in prison as a pariah, as somebody that was, you know, uh, basically, yo, don't, don't, don't rock with this dude because he's a snitch. And if, you know, if you know anything about street culture or urban culture, and I, phrase, and I phrase it like that just for the people that's watching this that might not understand where I'm coming from with this, you know, being, being you know, labeled as somebody that opens your mouth and tells on somebody if you commit a crime, being a snitch is, is looked upon in, the, in, the, in, you know, in jail as being the worst of the wor worst, you know what I mean? Like, yo, nobody's going to rock with you. Nobody's going to fuck with you in prison whatsoever. People going to mock you. And instead of be, be him being so popular, him being a popular snitch, that made it even worse. And Gully was saying how people, you know, Steady B was on an island by itself, basically. Not, you know, just to kind of phrase it for you. And, and, and nobody fucked with him when he was in prison because of what he did. And I just found that real interesting because I never, as much as I knew about the Steady B Cool C story, not now, but just from years ago, because I grew up watching these dudes. I grew up, I'm not going to say idolizing Cool C, but I mean, I grew up liking Cool C. I remember in sixth grade, you know, dudes going on sixth grade in like 88, what was that, 88, 87, you know what I'm saying? Do, you know, 80, 88 dudes going around saying the chorus to glamorous like ooh, ooh, in, 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 in grammar school back in sixth grade. You know what I mean? So these dudes that I look, looked up to when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? And just found out that Steady B was, was rolling like that. And he told on Cool C. And that's unfortunate. Um, you know, so it's just crazy. Do I look at Steady B a little different? I mean, I still, you know, hold his music at a certain regard of my youth, but... It is what it is, man. You know what I mean? It's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? Cool C, you know, uh, from all accounts in prison, not too many, uh, you know, Gully, you know, Gully didn't really have, you know, too much, you know, to say about his interaction with Cool C, except for Cool C. And this is going, this is like damn near almost 30 years ago. So um, I'm pretty sure. I don't know how life has changed for them over the last couple of years. Like is Cool C still in like a protective kind of custody? A certain part of uh, the prison system because he's still considered a death row inmate. This was 30. His account was like from 30 years ago. He said he saw Cool C. He was shackled up, locked up. And his only little bit of interaction was just, you know, Cool C, you know, a head nod from when they briefly saw each other in passing because he was, you know, in protective, like a serious kind of a protective situation chained up. But this was like 30 years ago. So I wonder how. Have li has life changed? Matter of fact, shout out to Gully again because he mentions that in another interview. I think it was on St. Last Channel. He said that Steady B is currently in prison. Like, people still don't fuck with him. They still don't rock with him. But he has his laptop. <laughs> he keeps a laptop with him when he's on the yard. And he still does the rap thing in prison. He's making beats 
on his laptop. What's crazy as hell, what's crazy is the fact that, you know, the Steady B is locked up for life, but he has a laptop that enables him to still do the rap thing, the rap shit, and make beats while in prison. Like, tell me how, let's just call it what it is. Tell me how fucked up this government system is in the U.S. to where you can still be in prison and locked up. But have a laptop of your own and be making beats and shit <laughs> like that. Yo, if that's not crazy, like, why should you have that privilege and you locked up? You know what I mean? Like, why should you have a privilege that most people don't have that's free? You know what I mean? Most people can't even afford laptops in the hood in the inner city. But yet you locked up and you got a laptop and you can make beats. It's crazy, right? That's a whole nother topic. Um, but yeah, man, I just thought it was interesting, um, how steady B is, is, you know, still, I mean, of all accounts, you know, he's, you know, still doing his, whatever his thing, I guess. And I, I, I DJ tab money actually to, to bring this to a, to close. I saw DJ tab money post something on IG a couple of, about a month or two ago of, he was actually FaceTiming, like did a video call was steady B in prison. You know what I'm saying? And I thought that was like, wow. You know what I mean? Like the prison system has come a long way to where, you know what I'm saying? They let you FaceTime and video chat with other people. You know what I mean? I mean, he doing life. You know, I guess you still have to have some kind of liberties to the people that's in, in prison for the rest of their life. But DJ Tab Money actually was on a FaceTime call, video call with steady B uh, about a month or two ago. I saw that he posted that on IG. So, yeah, man, let me know in the comment section what you think about all of this. Um, I just find this story very, very fascinating still. Some not fascinating, lack of a better word, but it's just interesting story for me some 30 years later how, you know, two guys at the height of their rap career, you know, fell off and then they went and did like a, a crime that they paying the rest of their life for. You have been watching the E for One podcast. I appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Peace.